Um, hi, my name is Tom Pearson. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the SETI Institute and was one of the co-founders of the Institute along with Dr. Jill Tarter uh, in 1984. And for the past 22 years almost now, the uh, SETI Institute has been devoted to the question of whether or not life might exist beyond our planet Earth. Uh, the Institute has three core missions. The one that we're best known for, of course, is SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, uh, essentially looking for radio or optical signals from distant planets um, in our galaxy. But our, we have two additional very important core missions. One is education and public outreach to help the public understand all of the sciences involved in the search for life beyond Earth. Um, and the third core mission is the science of astrobiology, essentially trying to understand how life got started here on Earth, how life exists in extreme environments here on Earth, and what that might tell us for future missions to uh, planetary bodies in our solar system, be it uh, planets such as Mars or perhaps uh, the moons of the large outer planets, looking for any evidence of microbial life either uh, existing now or extinct in, in, in the fossil record. Uh, we're, we're very proud to have an opportunity uh, today, for the, when this filming is occurring, to be sharing some of our work with the public. Uh, this is the first of what we expect to be an annual event to uh, uh, both uh, welcome the public into our building here in Mountain View, California, uh, share with everyone some of the work that we do and encourage people to join with our search. Part of our work is funded by grants from agencies like NASA and the NSF, but a significant part of our work is funded by private donations from individuals throughout the United States and, in fact, from throughout the world. And uh, so I hope uh, that the filming today goes well and that you get a chance to learn a bit about the work of the SETI Institute. Thank you. I'm Jill Tarter. I'm the director of the Center for SETI Research here at the SETI Institute. And one of the projects that we work on is building a brand new radio telescope called the Allen Telescope Array. And this is a telescope like no other. We are building a huge telescope. If we put it all together, it would be equivalent to a telescope that's 114 meters across. But we do it instead of building one great big telescope by building 350 smaller telescopes, each of which is only six meters across. And we do that because we can use some commercial technologies that are often used for the satellite uh, television industry, and we can use products from the telecom industry for amplifying our signals and shipping them around. And this is the least expensive way to build a world-class radio telescope. And we're building this telescope as a partnership between the SETI Institute and the University of California at Berkeley Radio Astronomy Lab. And when it's completed, this telescope will do traditional radio astronomy. It will survey the universe, looking at hydrogen, looking at uh, galaxies, looking for dark matter, looking for transient radio sources, doing all kinds of interesting science at the very same time that we use it to look for artificial signals that may be coming from someone else's technology, what we call SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And so we've got a poster here uh, about the telescope that shows a lot of the unique features. Uh, we build it in a tent. We can build one of these structures a day once we have all the parts on site. And once we finish building it in the tent, it gets picked up by this uh, transporter and driven across the lavas. And then we have a number of pedestals that have already been implanted and the telescope gets mounted on the pedestal and that operation takes about 20 minutes. So we're all set up to produce a telescope in about a day and that's what you have to do if you're going to build 350 of them. This is um, a picture inside, up inside if you were, oh, there's some Bombay doors here and you can stick your head up and stand in there and then you can look at the feed. This is the thing that actually captures all the radio waves that are reflected by this primary and the secondary. And this has a very huge range of frequencies that it, it receives. And it is, um, it's one of the major innovations in the Allen Telescope Array. And I didn't mention that it's called the Allen Telescope Array. And that's no, um, that's no accident. The telescope has funded for all the technology development, the kind of innovations that we have here. 
by Paul Allen, who's the co-founder of Microsoft, and Paul also provided the, uh, the funding for the first phase of construction. So we're working now on getting the first 42 telescopes up and running, and um, as soon as we have the money, we'll have another 308 to make our 350 element array. And everyone is really eager to get on the air, and that's going to happen any day now. So there's a lot going on. It's being built in the Hat Creek Valley of Northern California, and anybody is welcome to, to come by and, and take a look. The only, the only deal is we'd prefer that you leave your cars with the digital processors in them and your cell phones and your digital cameras somewhere else because if you walk among these telescopes with a cell phone operating I can guarantee you that you're going to damage the very sensitive receivers that are here so um, with all due apologies we're going to make you keep your cell phone somewhere else and it's okay because it doesn't work in the Hat Creek Valley anyway so that's where we are and uh, we're all excited about uh, starting a new phase of observing here at the SETI Institute. What we've got over here is a very accurate one eighth scale model of the telescope. And you can see that the telescope has the ability to move in two directions. There's this elevation axis, so the telescope moves up and down by moving that gear, and there's an azimuthal moment. It can move around side to side with that motor. And this allows the telescope to track any source in the sky as the Earth rotates and the source appears to move overhead. It also, because we've put in special motors and have paid attention to this detail, this telescope actually moves incredibly rapidly and allows us to track things that are in low Earth orbit. So this telescope, the real telescope actually, can move as fast as four degrees a second across the sky. And uh, when you see it, it's really flying. Most, most astronomical telescopes don't do that, of course, because the astronomical sources move very stately and slowly across our skies. But uh, satellites, which are of interest to us for a number of different scientific purposes, move very fast, so our telescopes move fast to keep up with them. Uh -huh.